Tonight on the podcast, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to focus our attention on Georgia State Representative Misha Maynard. Now, while we're focusing our attention on this particular sister, she has committed a grave sin in the black American community. Now, you may say, what is her sin? She did not harm any animals or children. She didn't take anyone's life. She didn't scam her constituents out of millions of dollars. She didn't beat anyone. She didn't do any kind of crime in the state of Georgia, but her grave sin was walking away from the Democrat party. That was her grave sin. Now I looked into this and and I want, of course we always going to do our homework. Before we do anything else, you know how we are here. So I'm going to play some clips of her saying why she left a certain key points. I'm going to stop on, on one clip and we're going to just kind of expand, but it's a lot of things that she said that I really got to touch on. And of course, you know, I'm gonna get on to some of you black Democrats in Georgia a little bit, but let's go ahead and roll that. Today I stand here to say that I have decided to join the Republican party of Georgia. The major announcement coming after what she called, quote, harassment and intimidation since she broke with state Democrats on private school vouchers and police reform. I supported children and families over the teachers union. I supported the Republican position not to defund the police. Top state Republicans, including Governor Brian Kemp, were quick to show their support. The state party chair by her side at Tuesday's announcement. What it reflects is a reality about where there is a political home where diversity of opinion is welcomed. Meanwhile, Georgia's Democratic leader, Congresswoman Nikema Williams, slammed Maynard's decision as, quote, a stinging betrayal of her constituents. Nothing changes. The only thing that changes is I have support and I'm not being harassed and intimidated. They put a checks up on social media for a thousand dollars to run against me. Nobody wants to talk about that. Let's stop there real quick. So as you know, the backlash was very swift on Misha here, sister Misha, representative Misha Maynard. They say they were betrayed. They are upset, angry. They are putting up money to say, Hey, who gonna run against her? I got money to do so. Now her turn won't be up to 2024, but why the anger? Why? Obviously, she didn't feel welcome in the Democrat Party. And I thought all of y'all supposed to be our friends. But it gets a little deeper than what you even heard. I just wanted to just tap in and just acknowledge that the Democrats was already trying to get her out of the paint way before she even switched over to Republicans. So let's continue. Maynard said she'd been contemplating a defection for a while, but only announced her switch to the Republican Party on Tuesday. She faced a media backlash on social media from Democratic lawmakers and many of her own constituents who didn't vote for a Republican. Do you think that it was fair to constituents who had voted you in as a Democrat to switch parties without an election? I do. They elected me to serve them. I'm serving them. So I'm not, I haven't changed anything. I'm the same person, same values, um, voting for the same things. Just because I switch parties um, doesn't mean now I'm going to switch my values and my ideals. I'm going to say many other things as we look at your district uh, in the city of Atlanta. Uh, I'm going to read a couple quotes for you, okay? Um, okay. This, this isn't a political decision for me. It's a moral one. You say the most dangerous thing to the Democratic Party is a black person with a mind of their own. (laughs) Um, You went on to talk about Black Lives Matter. Then you said, but do they? I see every other minority being prioritized except black children living in poverty that can't read. We'll send a million dollars to the border for immigrant services, but black communities not even a shout out. Let's expand on those thoughts there, and I'm sure you've shared this with your colleagues. What do they say when you approach them on those issues? You know, I stand by everything that I said. Um, The Democrat Party has not been focusing on black Americans for quite a while now. Um, We cannot say that we care about 
people in marginalized communities if we want to keep them suppressed and oppressed. Um, one of the things that bothered me the most is when I would ask them, why are we doing this? Why is it okay for kids to not be able to read? We're in chat GPT um, right now. What are we doing? Their response to me was, we've got to give them hope. We've got to give them hope. So they need to just stay where they are. We, hope is what we're gonna give them. And in response, I would say, since when is a lie hope, right? In our community committee meetings, they actually would say that parents of poor children, right? Parents of poor children could not make decisions for them. They needed the lawmakers to make the decisions for their children. I, I completely do not agree with that. I'm happy to be a part of the Republican Party now so we can address those well, issues. Okay, now, now, let's stop right there. Let's, let's focus on some things. So she said that, hey, why aren't you prioritizing black Americans? And, 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 and I know she's not lying because that's how they think. Oh, we just need to give them hope. Basically, give them nothing. And you remember when she said, well, you know, we've got to keep them right where they are. So basically, keep black people in, at the bottom. Make black people a permanent underclass in this society. And we're going to make sure, and these are black Democrats doing this too. Because we talk about the Democrat Party, but you have a lot of black folk who's involved. And I told you, it is, most of them are Boule members. Most of them are. And you know, we have posted um, the uh, podcast on that from a video from 2019. If you haven't seen the Origins of the Boule um, podcast, go look that up. It's a few podcasts ago. And you know they're not for black people. They are, as they said, the boule is the gatekeepers. They are the gatekeepers for white supremacy to make sure black folk stay down and black folks don't progress. And then we know the Democrat Party has a wicked deception on black folk. Black folks are so emotionally tied to the Democrat Party. No other group of people in this country is emotionally tied to a political party. Nobody. They listen, they get angry. The Democrat Party and the responses I've seen to Representative Misha Maynard was downright criminal in a lot of ways. Cyberbullying, at least. I mean, they were threatening this woman, literally, for saying, you know what? I don't feel welcome in the Democrat Party. I don't see them really doing nothing for black people. And, and, and so let me try something different. That's all she's doing, trying something different. If it don't work out the Republicans, she can say, I don't want to be a Republican. I'll just go independent and stay independent. She could also walk away from that one too. But black people cannot, cannot, cannot think outside of the preset thoughts, the default setting for black people. Because they understand they have a particular position for black people in this country. And they have default settings for the way you should think, the false settings, the way you should vote, the false settings, the way you should spend your money, the way you should speak, who you should hang around with, who you sh should associate yourself with. There is a default setting. And in the black community, they will get angry at you if you get outside of that. How many times have I've done podcasts right here and I've had so many of them Democrat shields pop up and say, oh, you just a Republican like that's going to hurt me or something. And I've said many times I'm not a Republican, but if I was, what you going to do about it? Republicans paying you No, they actually haven't cut me a check, but if they cut me a check to support my podcast, what are you going to do about it? I'm still going to get on my podcast and, 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 and lay my proverbial foot to butt through, through the airwaves, of course, on this microphone to p speak the truth. Cause it, all those people that will say that to you, they cannot say you're lying about anything. They can't say you're doing uh, anything that's just going to hurt the black community. They just don't like what you're saying because it's out of the default settings that white supremacy on the left have given them. You understand? So they want us to just take hope while she said they're taking money and going to spend it on the border and they're not doing a thing in the black community. We know this. We know it. I don't take an issue with nothing she's saying because she's speaking of a black America, but those idiots, and yes, they are being idiots. 
those idiots in the Democrat party and even some of those constituents, they're just angry about it. You rather all your tax dollars go to people that's not even citizens of this country. Then when these people come into this country, they don't even like your black behind because in their own homeland, they didn't like the dark skinned people from their homeland. They like the whiter skinned people. But yeah, you're going to prioritize them and not prioritizing the people in your own neighborhood and your own district, your own communities. That's silly. So all you get is hope, which is nothing. Hope is nothing. Go tell a light company right now. Well, I- I'm not going to pay you money, but I'm going to, I'm going to pay you in hope. You know, the light company going to say, uh, sir, ma'am, the bill is due on the 30th. You don't pay it. You will get a disconnect notice. You don't pay it before the disconnect notice, the light's getting cut off. Go pay your mortgage or your rent on hope. Go to the grocery store, go fill up your, your, your buggy. And, 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 and when the bill is due, say, I, well, no, I don't have to pay that because I, I can just pay it in hope. No, hope is not a currency. The U.S. dollar is currency. And black folk need that same U.S. dollar that's going to immigrants and everybody else, Ukraine and all them. Why don't they give Ukraine hope? Give it to them. Give hope to the immigrants that's trying to come in here. The ones they're bringing in to do all their dirty work. I'm talking about the the labor class. Because the game with that is this. Bring people in from south of the border to do the the low-skill labor. Bring the Chinese, East Indians, and people like that in to do the tech jobs. Instead of hiring Americans to do these jobs, instead of hiring Americans in her own district to do some of these jobs, they need brothers that need to be doing construction jobs in Atlanta. Just to name one, they got the big Google building in Atlanta. They need, they need brothers and sisters to be working over there at the big Google building. I went to the Google building when I went to the um, YouTube black last year. I didn't even know they had that big skyscraper for Google in Atlanta like that thing's huge. I mean, he spent some money on that thing. Black folks need these jobs. But the Democrat Party is prioritizing everybody else but black folk. You want to get mad when these other groups pass you and they're wagging their finger at you, but yet you supported them getting all the resources. You did it. By constantly voting for a group of people that told you, I'm not doing nothing for you. All I'm going to give you is hope. Nothing you can't spend, nothing you can cash in for USD. Well, let's continue. For far too long, the Democratic Party has gotten away with using and abusing the black community. Um, I mean, just explain that and then tell us when, when you knew that you were going to switch parties. So a reporter asked me yesterday. The, the Republicans feel this way about X, Y, and Z. And I told her, if you look at a black community, there has not been a Republican elected there ever. So the problems in that community are not the Republicans. We cannot say that the problem are Republicans. It's black elected leaders. I am not the only person um, in Georgia in my district that feels this way. I am the only one that's stepping up and saying enough is enough. Um, If you really care about black people, the black people that are elected need to do something about the issues for the black people that they represent. What she said about the Democrat Party and black elected officials have been doing the black community for so wrong for a long time. That is the truth. We, We talk about that here all the time. You know good and well, I am not pro Democrat. I'm not because matter of fact, the more you do for self, the more you're not going to be pro Democrat. And this Democrat party today is not the Democrat party of your grandma and and, and your, and your great grandpappy. It's not that same Democrat party. This Democrat party uh, prioritizes degeneracy. They prioritize breaking up the family. They prioritize deletion of children. This is what they prioritize. They prioritize giving resources to every other group except the black man and woman of America. Why would I be with a party that's going, that is openly hostile? Do y'all realize the Democrat party is openly hostile to us based on the actions? They openly hostile. They get mad if we demand something. 
How dare you black people demand something? How dare you? They send their boule gatekeepers like Sister Nakima here, who's over the Democrats, to say it's a betrayal. Betrayal of what? Because she didn't feel welcome in the Democrat Party no more because let's talk about it. Okay, she went with Republicans on school choice. Why can't black children have school choice? Let's talk about something. In even poverty communities, they have smart children there. And if their parents can sacrifice and take their children to another school where their child would have opportunities to excel so they can get into great colleges and and universities and places like that. Why not give them a choice instead of sticking that child in that environment? Well, I'm sorry. A lot of them don't want to learn you. We've seen this in school. They go to school. It's like a babysitting session. They don't want to learn and they try to stop other people from learning too. We've seen this. In those environments, black kids are trying to learn. They're trying to really excel. They're teased. They're ridiculed. It's peer pressure on them not to learn. Because people are talking about the peer pressure of joining gangs, the peer pressure of doing this and that. No, there's also peer pressure not to learn. And some of you in the black community know exactly what I'm talking about. So if a black child has an opportunity to go somewhere else and not being pigeonholed to a district because, Hey, where well, the law says they live here, they got to go to this school. No black children deserve every opportunity. And why should their income harm the opportunity? If their parents are willing to make a sacrifice to take that child across town to, to another school, where they going to appreciate education and that child can excel. We need more brothers and sisters. That's smart out here. We got enough people that's twerking, enough people that's being freaking uh, uh, degenerates. We got enough of that. We need some smart young men and young lady in our community. And then the other thing that was so despicable that she said, the Democrats said, just because you're low income, you're not to be trusted to do, make decisions for your children. They should make a decision for you. So these boule members say that they need to make a decision for your child. They didn't have that child. They're not taking care of that child. And this is on the point with the the Democrat party because the Democrat party wants to remove parental rights from your children and the adults. They remove your parental rights and that's going way too far. I would never get with a party saying that I, as a parent should not have right to my child. All that mess they pushing in California. Well, they can be emancipated by by some shrink or whatever if they if the parent doesn't agree with confusion, gender confusion at 12 years old. Not 18. Listen, this is how I feel about that. When a person's 18, they can make whatever decisions they want about gender, about you know, uh with sexuality, whatever. They're 18, they're an adult. They're grown up now. But when when there are children and they have a a particular target on these children and the Democrat party supports that agenda. And also on top of that, the Democrat party is trying to globally spread their degeneracy throughout the world. So why would any black American person who is that all that degenerate behavior is not where we come from is not our lineage is not what our people have was always was in this country. Why would any black person say I can support that party? Now, some of you would say, well, she's part of the Republican party. You think the Republicans support reparations? Well, how many black people have been in the party to even push that issue about reparations? How many? That's the only thing I say about that. Have you actually pushed the issue? Have you discussed it with them? Have you say, Hey, you know, I mean, explain why reparations would even be good for the economy. Because sometimes you need to explain it, how reparations benefits other groups sometimes, especially the white supremacists. You let them know, Hey, look, you pay reparations to black Americans. The majority of them will spend the money right here in America. You can look at that as a way to stimulate the economy you're making the party look good, paying reparations. You make even America look good by paying reparations. But all it's going to do is help stimulate the economies, and you're actually going to do a moral correction of what was done to black Americans. So really, it's a win-win for everybody. 
It's not a lose lose for nobody. I say, where do you think these black Americans are going to spend the money? The majority of them is not going to leave America. Some may, but the majority is not. They may spend it on vacations or whatever. And even they spend it on vacations. Well, shoot, they got to use an American airline or for the most part to leave out of here. Or they buying products before they leave or, or whatever the case may be. Even if they move abroad, they're not going to give up their U.S. citizenship. So you're not really having a lose lose situation by paying reparations. See, sometimes you got to present reparations. Like it's a benefit to everybody that we get reparations because in a way, and I've been thinking about the way we've been presenting reparations is like, yes, it is right. We need reparations, but it will benefit everybody that we get reparations, but we have to make sure it's lineage based reparations. Cause just like everybody can't get it. It's just that simple. It has to be lineage based. So, but the Democrats don't support lineage based reparations either. It took freaking Clarence Thomas, Neil Gorsuch, John Roberts to name a few. And even Katanji Brown Jackson, she's a Democrat, but Republicans were talking about descendants of slaves, freedmen, etc. already delineated us enough where we could actually push for reparations and, and that's Republicans. But if you don't go even talk to the Republicans in power, you'll go holler at them and see what you can do to work with them. I ain't talking to them like the congressional black caucus when Trump was in office. He said, Hey, I want to talk to the congressional black caucus. What we can do for black people. We not going over there and talk to him. Are you freaking serious? I mean, the black community should have, should have had a mass condemnation and piss off session and say, you better get your behind and then go talk to Trump. And then I'm looking, the Hispanic community went talk to Trump. Asians went talk to Trump. The Jewish community went talk to Trump. LGBT went talk to Trump. Everybody went talk to Trump, but them, oh, I'm not going to go in there because they mad that Hillary didn't win. She wasn't going to win. That's what you get for cheating Bernie Sanders. Could you, y'all the Democrat party cheated that man. I'm not saying, Oh, oh, oh man, Bernie would be, Oh no, 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 no. They cheated him. And we see the pattern of cheating. And this is why they get so upset about certain laws because when they tried to lie and say that the Georgia voting law was Jim Crow 2.0. And then they, then they, the numbers came out more black people voted after the law than prior it. Well, if it was Jim Crow, no black people wouldn't have voted. But see, this is what the Democrat Party like to do. Gaslight black people, lie to black people, deceive black people. And you better tar and feather any black person that's not willing to be on the uh, uh, the religious Democrat Party. It's a religion for a lot of y'all. Democrat and white Jesus. I've said that before. That's what a lot of you believe in. Now, of course, you know, you got the... I say some of the, the uh, boot licks on the other side. And they, of course, they're excited about this. I don't focus on what the boot licks say too much. I focus on, okay, you're a representative. What you going to do? And I will say this, and I'm going to make sure after this podcast to tell uh, Kellen this. I would like to reach out to her, and I would like to go to Georgia and sit down and interview with her and ask her some important information about the black community since she's on the Republican side and is she going to bring these issues to the Republicans? Because why are you all mad? Oh, I'm not going to do that. No, 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 no. Ask the people in power what they're going to do. Put, put them on, on the spot, ask questions. Hey, you know, well, uh, representative Maynard, you know, I mean, we got, you know, lineage based reparations is very important for black Americans. And since the affirmative action case, we have definitely been labeled as descendants of slaves and freedmen. And the, and the descendants of slaves and freedmen are, are owed a debt. I mean, are you going to bring up reparations? Are you going to go talk to governor Kemp about reparations? Spread that message, explain how reparations will help and also even stimulate the economy. But if you don't even go have those conversations with nobody, how could you even get it done? Listen, I don't care who would do reparations. If the Republicans do reparations, great. If the Democrats did reparations, Great. I don't care who do it. That's the thing. I'm not, Oh, only the Democrats can do it. And if the Democrats don't do it, it's a hell. No, uh, uh-uh. uh, the fact is more and more black Americans are waking up to this mess. We're waking up to say this. You're not going to be just prioritizing everybody else off our vote. No, you're not going to do it. If we're not prioritized, then we're going to shake things up. 
because that's just what we do as black Americans. It's time out for all. Listen, we didn't, we didn't done for everybody already. Enough's enough. We don't owe no other group, nothing. We didn't gave all we can gave to you. You're on your own. You're on your own. We got to take all our energy and fix and solve our issues and problems. We got, you talking about gatekeeping. We need to gatekeep our culture, gatekeep our intellectual property, gatekeep everything. For instance, like me, I gatekeep very hard, even how I do things or why I do things. You can't pay me no money to even talk to me at this point. Because I've seen, you know, some people say, oh, you do a consultation and people ask you about business. No, uh, uh-uh. uh, because you look at the people who's really doing things. You can't pay to talk to them because no, uh, uh-uh. uh, and then even if you raise the price of certain price points, certain people who still pay that. And then now you got to talk to them and give them the answers because they paid you. That's why in, in, in the, uh, area would you have some of the manosphere? The reason why, uh, the, the Pearl situation happened is because she was willing to pay all of them to pick their brain. And then she picked all their brain and then scaled right past them because there's a, of course, an advantage for her due to her skin tone. So when I see stuff like that, I say, okay, that's when I really said, nobody talking to me, nobody. But if you work with me, I, I, I give you game all day. You working with me, right? No problem. You ask questions, I'll give it to you for free, but you just can't pay me to talk to me. A stranger can't. No. We got to gatekeep everything we got going on. We can work with other black people. You know, we can build up other black people and that's fine. But especially these other groups. Mm -mm, Nope. Because other groups do not let us come in to their things. They don't. And we got to be the same way. And don't feel bad about gatekeeping what you got going on, gatekeeping our culture. And let people know you're going to respect our culture. And, and the thing is, we've done so much for every, so many people, and they expect it, that they're hostile to us. They're hostile because they're so used to us just getting out there and towing the line that when we say, now nah, y'all do your own thing, now nah, they pissed. We say, you're saying now, nah, say, no, 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 get yourself out there and go fight for some rights. Because I'm going to be the biggest proponent of black folks saying, don't you dare get involved with nobody else's business. We got enough business right in the black community that you can get involved with. Enough. Especially that Democrat Party. Hurting people in Chicago. Hurting people in New York. I got a video coming I'm going to work on that. Where you had a, a one of our brothers in New York being attacked by, by, by immigrants out there the, from Venezuela. They brought all them people to New York and black American people are being targeted. You see what I'm saying? That's why I said we can't support that. We got enough white supremacists here that's targeting us. We don't need to be importing any. But this sister didn't do nothing wrong. She didn't do a thing wrong. She she felt they didn't support her. It's okay to have a diversity of thought. Just because somebody's a part of, part of a party don't mean they all got to agree on one thing. No. I mean, what is this, a gang or something? That's how gangs move. Oh, if you don't do... Well, with the with the OG say in the in the in the in the, the gang, it's gonna be a problem. No, everybody should have their own political thoughts, and if they don't agree with something, it's okay. They just don't agree. But to Representative Misha Maynor, sister, hey, go with your convictions. I support what you got going on. Only thing I would say is, fight for black people. Just fight for them. Don't, don't shuck and jive. Just fight for them. Show them that you can represent them well. Get on the streets. Talk to people. Find out what's going on. Find out about the homelessness. Find out about everything. And you go and fight for that community. Trust me. If you are bringing results to that community that you're representing, man, that, that R in front of your name don't mean crap. Because let me tell you something. They got a lot of black folks with a D in front of their name and haven't done nothing for black folk. In Georgia, in in in, in Name it, Texas, Louisiana, pick a state, California, haven't done a thing for black folk. And that's utterly uh, sad.